Hi, today I will be doing a quick review of the Form D T1 version 2.1. I'll also be doing a quick walkthrough of the build, modifications, and temperatures. I picked up the T1 for a great deal on eBay after deciding to shrink my desk setup down quite a bit. Before this, I was rocking with the Lian Li O11 Dynamic Mini Air, which is a 44 liter case. The T1 is a compact ITX 9.95 liter case that comes flat pack. I chose the titanium finish, but if I have to choose again, I'd consider the white or the two-tone options. The unique sandwich style layout of the case gives you plenty of customizations to fit GPUs from one slot all the way up to 3.25 slots, such as the 4080 Founders Edition. I almost forgot to mention that this case does come in other colors such as white, black, silver, along with the titanium color, and you're also able to choose different color side panels such as the black, the other black, <laughs> and the titanium color. I really like the way it looks from the straight lines, perforated side panels, and the color itself. It's very beautiful. I utilized a 3D print library to print off this AIO top hat, which gives you about 60 millimeters of clearance so you can use regular size radiators and fans or a slim radiator and let's say a T30 fan. You may have noticed finding this case is somewhat complicated as there's multiple sites you can find the T1, but there's only one site you can actually buy the T1 currently and that's formdt1.com. However, the NK site does list a newer version of the T1 with better surface finish, easier assembly, and better structural integrity, so it could be worth waiting for that. Getting into the build itself, I performed several cosmetic modifications such as uh, removing the decals and logos from the MSI B650i Edge Wi-Fi motherboard, along with replace the Kingston Fury RGB he syncs with a water cool module just for looks. I also removed the top cover of the Cooler Master Master Liquid Atmos CPU block because it just wouldn't fit in the case. It still looks amazing though. Powering this build is the AMD Ryzen 9 7900X and the NVIDIA 4080 Super Founders Edition. All of this is running off the Corsair SF750 80 plus platinum power supply. I decided not to show the build of the case because there's already pretty good tutorials on YouTube about how to build it, such as the video from Devin Johnston. I started by prepping the motherboard by removing the MSI logos and decals as I love the minimal sleek look. I used 100% acetone nail polish and kind of swabs then I peeled off the acrylic sticker attached to the M.2 heatsink slash fan assembly. Lastly, I removed the RAM from their stock heatsinks and installed these water cooling modules from Freeze Mod. It helps the build look more aesthetic and industrious. I then installed the all-in-one cooler. This is the new cooler from Cooler Master called the Master Liquid Atmos, which uses ARGB Gen 2. It has adjustable RGB inside the pump cover. The pump cover itself is also interchangeable as you can insert your own 3D print designs. However, I decided to turn the RGB off to achieve this minimal look. At first, I went with the Arctic P12 Slim Fans, but temperatures were slightly warmer than I liked. I picked up the Noctua NF-A12 Chromex Fans. Having the custom loop top hat provided me with extra space to use a normal fan rad setup. One of my favorite things about the Chromex line is the colorful vibration pads. They add that extra pop to any build. If you use the fan mounting bracket instead of the AIO bracket, you have extra space for cable management and cooling. The top hat just clears the top by one to two millimeters in this configuration. Here, you can see the motherboard and graphics card are sandwiched back to back, making cooling challenging. The IO is also decent for ITX motherboard, at the back you have the clear CMOS button, two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, three USB Gen 3.2 ports, one USB 3.2 Type-C. There's also 2.5 gigabit Ethernet LAN and HDMI 2.1 for integrated graphics. There are four thumb screws that secure the two side panels and both top and bottom panels to the back bracket. 
on the other side, we have the new RTX 4080 Super Founders Edition. It looks really nice in this black color. I do recommend using the 3.25 slot configuration along with installing the graphics card first as not doing so is incredibly difficult and you run the risk of scratching your case or your graphics card. Ask me how I know. The case gives you three areas to secure the graphics card as it's basically floating upside down. I have tried the upside down configuration. The GPU was seated better, but the air bubbles in the CPU block made the noise unbearable. The 12 volt power connector is against the bottom panel slightly, but the case closes with no problem. Purchasing a set of salt unsleeved cables from my DIY is strongly recommended. I was worried about cable management in general as I decided to use the stock cables for my power supply. Purchasing the cables from Mod DIY or Cable Mod was going to cost too much for my deadline as I needed the cables within a week. Almost $200 Canadian dollars with express shipping. I used plenty of zip ties and took my time routing the cables. Having that extra clearance under the fan and radiator was critical. Looking at our temperatures, uh, we're using Cinebench R23 for the test. There is a curve optimization profile of negative 18 all cores. Uh, we're using the fan control software to manually control the fans at 100% for this test. For the CPU idle, there's about 19% improvement in cooling within our tools. Uh, CPU low, there's about a 5.4% improvement in temps. For the GPU idle, there's about 11% improvement. And for the GPU low, there's about 5.2% improvement on temps. I will say I expected a higher margin of difference when it comes to the P12 and the Night Tool, but I think the P12 is showing that it's actually a decent option uh, if you need to go for a slimmer fan. I also tested the 50% uh, fan speed option, um, still with the same uh, Cinebench R23 and Native 18 curve optimization. Um, but here we see the numbers change a little bit with a 22% improvement with my tools, about a 1% improvement in CPU load. Um, for GPU, looking at 13% improvement on the idle and about 5% improvement on the GPU load. I still think the RTX P12 is a good option if you have no other choice but to use a slim profile fan. Even though the CPU load does peak at 95 degrees Celsius, I think AMD said this is right within spec. Getting into the Cinebench R23 multi-core scores, you can pretty much see a 5% improvement across the board for the lot of tools. Although these results are heavily dependent on your silicon quality and motherboard, I believe this is a great example of why you should be optimizing your CPU out of the box. A reduction in temperatures, boosting clock speed, and score is a win-win. In the Cinebench single core test, we're seeing temperatures max at around 60 degrees Celsius. Only one core is being tested at a time, alternating between two cores during the test. The slight temperature reduction only yields about a 1.2% increase in seal core performance and about a 3% increase in frequency. To conclude this video, I want to talk about some pros and cons of this build, but I think going forward, I'm going to start adding more things to the PC, such as maybe some softer cables for better temperature. Starting with the pros and cons, I believe the top hat is a great option if you want to maximize your cooling potential. However, the fit and finish may vary depending on your 3D printer. I really hope they can produce the top hat made of better quality material that matches the colors of the case. I think where the case ultimately shines is its compatibility and fitment. You're able to get some really powerful components in this case, rivaling other cases like the NR200 or the Encase M1 Evo. Another con is the absence of dust filters. There are other third party options you can use, but you will have to assemble the case to clean it more often. This especially shows on the black. 4080 Super Founders Edition. In closing, this is a good case. It has plenty of functionality while having an extremely small footprint. Being a 10 liter case, it does offer a couple of challenges and complexities. I highly recommend purchasing soft, unsleeved cables for ease of use. 
Do a more research or component fitment while using the GPU slot widget on the website for accurate CPU clearance compatibility. The last thing I want to recommend is that you take your time in this case. This case is meant for the enthusiast who don't really mind higher temperatures and building in a small lunchbox size case. Thank you for watching.